So starting with the theoretical, what exactly goes into your thought process? I mean, are you, do you have a periodic table on the wall and you throw a dart and you go, all right, let's try strontium or, you know, let's try uh, 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 ruthenium. You, you know? know, I haven't tried that, but yeah. I think I might have to just do that with my coworkers. You might as well be just <laughs> as uh, effective. So, yeah, what kind of properties do you look for in an element or in a material, in some substance? What is it? I mean, are you looking at reduction potentials? Are you trying to, uh, how, what, it, what are you examining? Sure, yeah. For, I mean, a big part is the chemical stability, mm-hmm. the electrochemical stability. Will it react inside of the battery when I don't want it to react. Okay, yeah. Because I only want certain chemical reactions to happen right. or else I lose efficiency. Mm-hmm. It's got to so, be able to do chemistry, but it can't be doing too much chemistry. Yeah. It has to do the right amount of chemistry. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Okay. So that's a huge factor. Another huge fa- factor is cost. Mm-hmm. So it has to be cost effective. I don't want to put a bunch of platinum inside of a battery. Right. Because no How reason. rare is the material? Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in general, there's a lot of resources online and um, publications from academia that give you kind of um, creative inspiration mm-hmm. as far as directions to go, tests to try. So you're looking to the literature, you're looking at the chemists, you're looking in the material scientists that are sort of doing a little bit of the legwork on here are some materials that there are and here are some of their properties and what they do. More in like not necessarily the materials they use, mm-hmm. but the processes they use to analyze the materials to find the right ones oh, okay. to put inside. Because our chemistry system, our battery chemistry is so unique Mm -hmm. and that's why it's so great like we're at the forefront of the battery research wave Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we are having to innovate and we're trying to do things that nobody else has done before Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so it it is a lot of creativity it is a lot of understanding the fundamentals of the science involved right and trying to just work with that as best you can test your hypotheses you know the scientific method as much as you can yeah that's great. I mean, that means that there's that must be exciting because there's a lot at stake because anybody has the opportunity to potentially innovate the technology, cut the cost in half or something, and then you've got this whole new market. Right? Every time that uh, that you scientists innovate the technology and you bring the cost down, then you're you're increasing the proportion of the of the population that is going to have access to that technology. You know, you got a hundred thousand dollar electric car. Now what's the cheapest electric car right now? It's gotta be in the twenty in the twenties yeah. thousands, right? So it's something that is now finally a reality for the middle class. Yeah. You know, and that yeah. is a game changer anytime you you know, although the middle class is is dwindling, but uh hopefully we'll be back. But I mean, uh yeah, it 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 really is it really is invigorating to to think that way. Just like, wow. So so okay, so tell us about the practical side. How are you interacting with the client? Um what sort of feedback are you getting that guides your further research? I don't know how much I can talk about this. Ah, uh, okay. If we're if we're going to tiptoe around some stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish yeah. I could share more. It's unfortunately a very competitive field. That's so. fair enough. Yeah. Which it was my whole agenda. <laughs> I'm I'm going to sell this info to the competitor. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I yeah, I totally get that. Uh, but I, it, I, but I, I will say that I think it's really neat to be collaborating with you know, just I, I not only collaborate with other like automakers, people who want our batteries, but also with other companies who are trying innovative things. Mm-hmm. And it's so cool to batteries are so interdisciplinary. That's what attracted me to them. Right. Because there's physics, there's chemistry, exactly. there's uh, yeah. engineering, material engineering, science. Yeah. I think that's the main reason I don't understand it is because I know nothing about engineering. I mean, really, truly nothing. <laughs> so like the physics and the, the chemistry I get and the physics to an extent, but like anytime there's like materials and machinery, it's just my understanding is out the window. I, like I seriously need to brush up on well, some I admire, engineering content. I admire your organic chemistry knowledge because that you. is one class I've never <laughs> taken and I'm like self-taught. So <laughs> that's it's funny though because when you were ta- when we were talking about choosing materials, I immediately thought of like organometallic catalysis where we where we pick uh, we pick certain transition metals to try to make these complexes that will that will promote these certain transformations. But even there, it to me again, I think that organic chemists are just sort of 
throwing darts at the periodic table. Here's what here's what ruthenium does. Here's what what uh, you know what platinum does. What palladium does. And it's just how how do you know what these things are going to do? How do you know what this tin complex is going to do? How do you know what this you know? It's just it's so mind boggling. Once we started to expand our chemical knowledge from sort of the basic you know uh, you know or, or organic materials into this this unknown territory that is all of this.